Tonight, Ravensbourne joins the rates rage. And we meet an Australian management specialist masquerading as a comedian, or vice versa. Good evening. Dunedin's rates battle looks set to boil over into the next local body election. Angry Ravensbourne ratepayers are talking about the possibility of forming a new political group if they don't get their own way over rates. Kim Hurring reports the group wants to throw out the new capital value rate system. The people of Ravensbourne have been paying about the lowest rates you could get in Dunedin. But they argue that their property values are low, they have to live with the fertiliser works and they have fewer services. But now the sleepy suburb under Mount Cargill has mobilised itself because the people are wild about increases of as much as 1,200%. The rates on this cottage have gone from $55 to 627 at a meeting at the local rugby club last night, it was obvious there's no love lost between Ravensbourne and Maori Hill. As far as the Maori Hill residents are concerned, forget them. I've got no sympathy for them whatsoever. They bought into the area of their own right. That's right. right here. And buying into it, they knew the rates and the values when they went in there. So why should I... My heart bleeds for them, it really does. <laughs> now, these people managed to put pressure on certain councillors to bend the rules to extreme. They did this by a series of legal manoeuvres. The meeting discussed various ways to put pressure on city councillors or even put forward its own candidates for the next election. You must form yourself into a political organisation, take these guys on politically, they've done it politically, take them on politically and do them, do them cold. To this area formed a uh, rates, rate payers association that would enable us to probably get more services, sell footpaths, etc. in the area. So there's a lot around. I don't even get a refuse collection from my place. I have to carry it up to a street. We've been fighting for those for years. Why start fighting now? We've been doing it for years, mate. Have you been paying those rates for years? Yes, I've lived down here just gone 30 years. I know. When I came here, my rates were 12 and 6 a year. Now they're 700 odd bloody dollars. That's just why I'm saying you should have the services, madam. Thank well, you. Well, we've never had them. We insist that they reinstate our democratic right to have a say on the most contentious issue in local body politics. We continue to, we will continue to fight to make sure that council gets the message loud and clear, and is not allowed to manipulate the system to suit a small minority group. We need to come up with an alternative package because it isn't good enough to actually just oppose capital value versus, versus land value. We've got to look at a just and equitable way of collecting revenue for the city that shares the burden fairly and provi provides services on a fair basis. Now, people don't expect top-of-the-line services when they're not paying top-of-the-line rates, but they do expect a fair suck of the old sack, and we certainly don't get it down here <laughs> at all. <laughs> Signatures are being collected for a petition to be presented to the City Council after a protest march which starts just after five next Monday night. In what's shaping up as Dunedin's suburban wars, the Maori Hill community has called upon its people to be there also. In Queenstown tonight, the Lakes District Council is still discussing whether the old bathhouse on the lakefront is to be restored or demolished and replaced. The bathhouse was used originally as dressing sheds and the Council's Reserves Committee believes it's too dilapidated to restore. But the Historic Places Trust and the Department of Conservation have joined forces to try to save the old building, one of the oldest in Queenstown. The men and women who lost their jobs when Burnside Freezing Works closed can expect their redundancy checks in the middle of next week. Payments range from $2,000 to $27,000 and advice on what to do with the money is being provided by the resource centre set up to help workers. But as Mark Price reports, its main aim is to set them on the road to new jobs. No, it's not a redundancy check. It's the $417 of proceeds raised by a special performance of Roger Hall's latest play, After the Crash, put on by the Fortune Theatre recently. The money was presented today and it will be put towards the last fling for Burnside meat workers in the town hall later this year. Currently, they have little to celebrate. 850 people relied on Burnside for a job. Only about 10% of tradesmen and some unskilled workers have found new jobs.
The resource centre's found that dozens of people are now in Australia or even further afield, and it's advising others also thinking about making the move. What we're advising people to do is not sell their house. It's to go, if they're going to Australia, to go over and have a look and then if they've got a job, fair enough. If they don't, well, they've always got their house to come back to. Hanging on to that house seems to be one of the priorities. I think it's, yes, I think it is. The resource centre will be going for about another month or so. In that time, job training will be its top priority. We do know we're getting criticism that there's no jobs to go to after the retraining, but it must make it a bit more, better chance. Also, it gives the people an initiative to get up out of bed and do something for the day. Financial help will be available to all recently redundant workers in Dunedin at a seminar next Monday night. The Dunedin Club has defended itself against a stinging attack from National MP Winston Peters over its media policy. Mr Peters described the club as archaic for not allowing television cameras to film his recent appearance there. But the club says what goes on behind its doors is not the public's business. Kim Haring with the details. The home of the Dunedin Club, Fern Hill, is considered by some to be a home away from home. To others, it's a male bastion of conservatism. The chandeliers shook here when Winston Peters was invited to talk at a dinner and he told the club to get into the 20th century and allow television cameras to film his speech. News media all over the country were disappointed to find they couldn't cover the speech of their hottest property. Well, I was astounded, really, because I had a message for a province that has 10.9% unemployment. Uh, the rest of my speech concerned the kind of assistance a sound government should be giving. And uh, if I'd have known that they weren't going to have television, I'd have gone to some other venue with the same group of men present. Do you think that they've really held back Dunedin itself by not giving coverage to the speech? Well, television, as I said in my speech, is part of the 20th century, and uh, you've got to get with it. Uh, you've got to make sure that the greatest number of people in that area uh, understand what is being said about the province. But the club says Peters was forewarned there'd be no news coverage. Their policy's pretty straightforward on any media involvement. In this case, it was a private dinner organised by a few of the members of the club who invited Mr Peters in a private capacity. And as far as we're concerned, that's like many other dinners we have. The club is an extension of our home and we accord the same privacy to the private functions of the club as we would to a dinner in our own home. What are the members scared of? They're not scared of anything. That's a private function which enables the speaker to speak informally and perhaps say a little bit more than they might if the media was present. The winds of change are blowing through the Dunedin Club. I'm reliably informed there's a move to allow women to become members, but that's not going to happen for at least two years. A comedy duo performing at the Cahoon Theatre this week is getting rave reviews from management staff at Dunedin's major hospitals. Australians Shane Yates and Patricia Cameron Hill are actually here to try to improve the health care service. And as Lee Davies discovered, the message may be serious, but the act has its audience rolling in the aisles. <laughs> Shane and Patricia are actually a doctor and nurse team masquerading as a comedy act, or a comedy act masquerading as doctor and nurse. Today's session is on the liver. Oh, the liver. Do you remember yesterday when I was a brain? <laughs> did, it, did you get excited when I said... Did you? You don't stand a chance unless I get excited. Now, if you're not as excited about the thing that you've got to teach, you've got to get excited. They use all kinds of devices to get the message across and they've found humour as an important ingredient. Without it, they strike problems. The, uh, the audience didn't come back. <laughs> Simple as that. that uh, it took us a while to learn that if you want to uh, teach people that you have to entertain them first. And uh, the reason our seminars are usually over two days is that we help people to get their heads right, their attitudes right, and we entertain them and they relax and they laugh, and once they're relaxed, they're ready to learn. The audience here is learning to manage staff and resources creatively. This time, Shane and Patricia make the point with a role play. Here we are. Well, Shane. <laughs> How do you feel, you go? Oh, not bad. Not bad. <laughs> How do you feel about him? <laughs> Game 
forms are used to show these managers that they can introduce learning to the workplace simply and creatively. If it's fun, it has a better chance of working. Have you got a quiz show here in New Zealand? It's in the bag. Okay, do you have a glamorous hostess? Yes. I'll be her. <laughs> you know, my mother was always concerned about my modesty. <laughs> I can understand that. Okay. <laughs> And while Patricia and Shane are impressed with health services in Dunedin, they think their Australian experience has something to teach here. Um, well, I think we can say, what have you got in common with Australia? Tough times in healthcare, tough times throughout the country. So that is a fair incentive for people to be more creative, to find better use of resources and, and to adjust to those uh, to tough times. A scientific society which has been going for well over a hundred years in New Zealand has been meeting in Dunedin. It's the Royal Society of New Zealand which represents all branches of science. Today Bernard Buck asked the President what role it plays in today's scientific world. We still give advice to government, particularly when independent advice, independent of any institution like government departments or universities is required. We can bring together, because we represent everybody, we can bring together all the expertise and put them in a room uh, and say, well, you're independent. You don't owe any allegiance to anybody except the truth. But what about the governments themselves? Does it take note of what you say? Uh, well, governments take note of what you say, principally if you say what they want you to say. But uh, we don't care about that. We say that's our report and that's what you will do. But certainly in, a, in, in many cases, uh, our most recent report on lead in the New Zealand environment had all sorts of problems with lead and how it occurs. Yes, government does take advice on that sort of thing. And we're just about to do one on potential climate change, which is going to be devastating. Well, not devastating, but going to require a lot of changes in this people's economic and personal lives. Um, they'll certainly take advice on that. Kurao is the warmest part of the south today, though North Otago farmers may be hoping soon for some of that rain which fell in the far south. It was drizzly in Half Moon Bay and 8 degrees today. Invercargill had drizzle and 9, predicting a high of 8 for tomorrow. Overcast in Gore and 9. Raining in Belclutha, 2, 10 degrees. Overcast in Dunedin and uh, double figures, 10 degrees. 8 degrees predicted as a high for tomorrow. High cloud and a bit of a higher temperature in Palmerston today, 12 degrees. Misty in Omeru and 10. In Kurau, high cloud and 18, the big high. Queenstown, cloudy and 10. Wanaka, partly cloudy, 13. Alexandra, cloudy and 12. Tayanau, drizzle and 10. Before we go, congratulations to the Invercargill Police Rugby Team. They thrashed the Dunedin Police Team 21-13 to at Invercargill today. We'll be back tomorrow night. Good night. <laughs>